All right, folks, welcome back. I know it's been a long time since I've done a video, but I'm here to do one because I've got some time and we've had a request. Let me show you the uh, problem that's been requested tonight. Um, this is the problem that's been requested. Rank the following wavelengths in order from lowest energy to highest energy. 500 nanometers, 190 nanometers, 250 millimeters, and 320 micrometers. Uh, the teacher also gives a hint uh, that the units should all be the same. So, before we can get started on this problem, we need some background information. So, let me pull up the webcam. Now, in order to do this problem correctly, involving these wavelengths and involving uh, energy, we need two equations that we need to look at. One of them is the uh, speed of light equation that deals with frequency and wavelength. Now remember this V stands for frequency, lambda here stands for wavelength. The other one is energy equals, now this is energy of a photon of light, so energy is equal to Planck's constant times V. Now, if you notice, this is the one that we really need, but notice that wavelength is not involved. So what we'll have to do is we will have to take this problem and solve it for V, plug it in so we can have wavelength in this equation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we have V equals C. Now, I need to get this V by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by lambda. When I do that, this lambda is gone, and this lambda will be in the bottom below C. Now, if you do not like that explanation of picking up lambda and setting it underneath C, then basically you divide both sides by lambda, or you can say that you multiply both sides by uh, 1 over lambda. But anyway, we now have this. Now what we have is energy equals H times, uh, instead of V, we're going to plug in C over lambda. Now if you want to write this equation a little bit neater, uh, this is also the same thing. E equals Planck's constant times the speed of light constant divided by lambda. Now, we're pretty much ready, but before we uh, tackle this, we're actually going to look at this equation up here. Now, we do have two constants in this problem once we make the substitution. Now, constants are that. They're constant. They're not going to change. But let's look at the effects of frequency and wavelength on energy. Notice here that there is a direct relationship between uh, frequency and energy, meaning this. If you were to double this V, mean have 2V here, and you just put 2V there, you're saying 2 times V when you do that, if you double V. Well, in math, what you do to one side, you got to do to the other. So basically, if you double V, you're doubling the energy. Okay, so that's a direct relationship. Now, believe it or not, there's also a direct relationship between energy and wavelength but it's not just like this one. Let me show you. Really here we have that energy is directly related to the inverse of the wavelength. Now I always hated when math teachers explained it like this, directly related to the inverse of the wavelength. But let me go ahead and try to break that down for you. If you were to double this wavelength, that means put a 2 down here, you're actually putting a 2 down in the denominator. Now, what you do to one side, you're supposed to do the other. So if you double this denominator, you would have to double this denominator below the E. Now, at first glance, you don't see one, but there's one here. It's over 1. So basically, if you doubled lambda here, you would have to double this denominator here, having 2 times 1 and here having 2 times lambda. So you would be taking half of the energy, half of the photon. So basically it's safe to say that if the wavelength is increasing, meaning the wavelength is getting larger, okay, you see that? Two on the wavelength, two times, three times, four times, five times, then you're going to be reducing the amount of energy that you have. So the two relationships that you need to know here is that if you double frequency, you're going to double energy. If you uh, quadruple it, you're going to quadruple the energy. and for this particular problem, you need to know this, this relationship here, which is basically 
E is directly proportional to the inverse of the wavelength. So just basically the largest wavelength is going to produce the least amount of energy. So since we have the background information we're ready to solve this problem. Now if you notice in the problem, let me pull it up here so we can see it really well. Notice in this problem here, let me get the camera back up now, we need to categorize these. Now let's do what the, uh, the teacher had suggested, a hint. We're going to write down 500 nanometers, just like it is, so I can have them on the sheet of paper, 190 nanometers, uh, 250 millimeters, and 320 micrometers. Now, that, that micro is not the prettiest thing in the world, but anyway, there we go, micro. Now, let's convert all these to meters. So, don't yell at me, but I'm not going to swing any decimals. I'm just going to write the 500 down again, but on nano, I'm going to change it to powers of tens. So, that will be times 10 to the negative 9 meters. This one will be 190 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. This one will be 250 times 10 to the negative 3. This one will be 320 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Whoop, I forgot my meter sign on this one. Now, remember, we're looking for the one that has the uh, largest wavelength first because it wants the lowest energy. Out of these, the largest wavelength is going to be the one that is the you know basically this the largest number and all these are negative exponents well this is the one that has negative three now negative three is my largest number so uh, the 250 times 10 to the negative three uh, meters is my largest one meaning it's going to give me my lowest energy remember back uh, from what we learned the largest number, the bigger this number is, the smaller this E is going to be. So like if that's like 20, it's going to cut that 20 times. If it's like 60, it's going to cut this down by 60, meaning E divided by 60. Okay, it's, so it's, the number's going to keep getting smaller. Anyway, after that, the next one that's in line is going to be uh, this 320 because it's a negative 6. So uh, I guess to technically get this correct, I should draw that sign there. That would be less than for the, remember, this is for energy, okay? Then the next is the 320 times 10 to the negative 6 meters. Then it's going to be this 500, because remember, uh, it's larger than this. So, you know, the larger, you know, larger. So 500 times 10 to the negative 9 meters. And finally, the one with the largest energy is our 190 here. Now if you want these to look exactly like they were in the beginning uh, this would be 250 millimeters then it would be the 320 micrometers then it would be the 500 nanometers and then Last but not least, it would be the 190 uh, micro, uh, nanometers. Now, like I said, guys, I hoped that this helped uh, with this question that the uh, individual had. And just remember that there is a relationship uh, between frequency, wavelength, with energy. Okay? Increase fr uh, frequency, you're increasing energy. If you increase wavelength, you're decreasing energy. All right, guys, I hope it helps. Hope it helped you, and this is the credits. So y'all have fun.